Hey everybody, Kathy here with Paint Pouring by Kathleen Miller. Today we're doing something a little bit different. I've been getting a lot of comments and questions. How do I finish my uh, canvases when they are dry? First of all, after I create my canvas, what I do is to avoid any type of cracking in them, I put them under a big box or like just a crate of some sort to let them just dry slowly. Can't give you too much of a peek on that because that's a brand new one that I just did. But anyways, you can see by this one, there is no cracking, nothing. It's totally dry. That's how you avoid it. <clears throat> you have to let it sit for days until it's dry. I mean, I have three of them behind me also, well, behind Phil, that um, are not dry either. So you want them to dry slowly because if they dry too fast, you will get cracks. So another question that I've had a lot of is how do I varnish? People are afraid and scared to varnish. It's very easy. Now your resin is a little bit more complicated, but your varnish is not. And what I do is I put three coats of varnish. So what you're gonna need is, I only use one glove, but you can use two gloves. A glove, a blow dryer. Your blow dryer has to have a cool setting. You have to have it on cool. This will get rid of your bubbles. A paint pad, I do not use a brush because a brush for me causes brush streaks and then the little hairs come off sometimes, this is much better. Disposable bowl, my Liquitex gloss varnish. There is a link on the video for this. And my respirator. You should use a respirator for resin and for varnish. This also is, uh, has a link to get it through Amazon. Yes, in our description box, I have purchased links for these products, so check those out. Now, I'm not gonna use this respirator today because uh, you will, probably won't be able to hear me <laughs> talk or whatever, so I'm gonna leave this off, but when I go out in the garage, I have 10 out there, I will put my respirator on, but I'm only doing one in here, and I never, ever really resin in here, but Phil would have to sweep the garage and that would cause dust. No. You do not want any dust on your creations. Right. Well, you do want a well ventilated, ventilated. area yes. and a dust free area. So we're kind of going against that by doing it in the house here. Well, it is dust free in the house, but it isn't ventilated that much. But since Kathy is just doing one, I'm just doing one to show yeah, everybody. I'll take you it don't outside real quick. Have to be afraid. Okay. So when you have a long canvas like this, you don't want to go down like this because it's going to leave a streak. And what I do is after I do this, I kind of go and look at it to see if I covered the whole thing. If I didn't, then I will go down and do it again. But I put three coats of this varnish on each one. So I'm going to demonstrate how you do this. You go this way. So this is the first coat that you're... On this one. On this one, okay. You start at the top, you go down. You do not want to do a double. Okay, and you get more varnish after each swipe. Okay. Right. And like you say, you just swipe once. You can, if you miss it, you can go back over it, but it's not going to hurt it, but you really just want to do it one time. And I mean, it's easy. It's, it's not difficult. Now, there are spray varnishes as well. I don't use spray varnish. I never have. Um, I've been painting for a long time. And I did all of them back home in Illinois like this. And uh, if you coat it, you can put it outside or inside. I have them around my pool. We've been here for three years. And they're like brand new. And we've had some paintings outside for over three and a half years in the Arizona sun and heat. And it's just amazing. Um, 
it hasn't affected the canvas uh, at all. It, it, it'll actually affect the wood <laughs> uh, a little bit because we don't varnish the wood, but the okay. actual painting is fine. Yeah. Now, see, you can go back over it just a little and dab it if you want because I like to, you know, look at it from the side, make sure I have it all covered. And you're doing it, looks like you're doing it very lightly. Very lightly on this second time around here. Just making sure, really light. Don't push down on it. And I just stand to the side and I'll look. Yep, it's all covered. Okay. So what I do is, now I pick it up. Well, I should actually have painted the sides of this black first. Well, I don't like know. I on that one, do. I kind of like how uh, it's dripped down on the sides. But I usually, all my canvases are painted black on the sides. This one is not because I'm just showing you what I'm doing. And I do so many, I can just flip this around. That's why I only wear one glove, because I just flip. <laughs> Yes. Never have dropped one. But like I said, I've been doing this forever. Phil can tell you. Okay. We are finished with our first coat. Now, you take your blow dryer. Well, we'll do it on low. And you go over this to make sure all your bubbles are cat, um, gone. This will totally get rid of your bubbles. And then you'll be ready for the second coat. Wow. Now I let mine dry overnight. And then I'll go back and do a second coat the yeah, next say, day. You, you try to give it close to 24 hours. You don't have to because I think on this it says you can come back in three hours. Yes. And, well, let's see. Varnish, blah, blah, blah. Blah, pie. Yeah, you can, I mean, you can, you just read what it says. But I let it sit 24 hours. Then I'll do another coat. Let it sit 24 hours. I'll do another coat. So, that's it. That's all there is to varnishing. Um, don't be afraid. It's not going to, you know, wreck your canvas or anything. And as you can see with the first coat already, how beautiful the colors are starting to come out. Yeah, it really pops the colors once you get the varnish going on. Mm -hmm. yes. So because I have, um, I have a canvas here that's dry and you can tell the difference with the varnish compared to the one that isn't varnished yet. Yeah, here's one, yeah, that is not varnished. That's, uh, uh, let me get them both in the picture. And it's it's kind of hard to see, it's but hard I to mean, see, in person, but... you definitely can tell once it has a coat, uh, a coat of varnish, and especially after three coats. It's it beautiful. Makes a major it really difference. makes them pop. Now, if you don't want to varnish, you can resin as well. I do have a resin video on our, uh, I think you came, you saw a resin video today on there somewhere, I believe. Um, it was a while ago, so it's way, way back. And, um, but I wanted to do this and show everybody because it's not as hard as you think. So if you do have more questions, just leave me a comment or private message me or just message me and I'll get back to you and I'll help you. So until the next time, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful for all of you. And um, have a great day. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Wear your respirator when you do this. I'm a doo-doo. Yeah, I'm getting lightheaded. <laughs> you're already lightheaded. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> you're already lightheaded, so I mean, hell, I don't know. But okay, everybody, uh, subscribe to our channel. We're in the 9,000s now. It's awesome. I'm trying to hit my goal of 10 by Christmas. And uh, we love all of you and share this. And until the next time, bye alligators.
Hey everybody, Kathy here with Paint Point by Kathleen Miller. I've had a couple of subscribers asking me to do a resin coating, so that's what I'm doing today. And the products I'm using are, it's KS Resin. I love KS Resin, it's like a glass finish. You get the resin and you get the hardener. And what I do is, I get my see-through cups like this and I fill it up to the top line. That's what I do. You can fill it up to any line that you want and you have to have equal amounts of each one. So if you fill it there, you fill it there. <clears throat> the hardest part is stirring it for like four minutes and your hand gets really, really tired from stirring. And it's gonna be cloudy at first when you stir it. It'll get very cloudy, then it'll get clear, and you can see, but there's gonna be a lot of bubbles in it, which it doesn't matter because all resin has bubbles. And what you do is you torch out your bubbles. But I'll show you how I, I do my resiny. So I'm gonna do it on a coaster and show you first. What I do is... Now you have the coaster sitting on a cup, so it's off the Right, you always table. wanna have it up off the table. Okay. Um, I pour a little bit on here. Okay. I'll show you. I'll bring it over. I always pour just a little bit on my coaster. I spread it out from the middle to the sides. And you can already see how the colors are changing. Then what I do is I go along the sides of my coaster. So no, I have all of them covered all the sides. Now those coasters uh, have been drying for like at least three days, right? Oh, they, these have been drying longer than that, but yeah, you gotta give them at least three, four, five days to dry. Before you? Before you resin. Them. Okay. And what I do is I keep going around and around and around. Then I hold it up to the light to make sure that I have all the sides done. That's it for my coaster. So, what I do then is, I usually do probably, um, I'll show you over here, I usually do like That's two rows of them, like this row and this row. Then I lean down like this, and you can see your bubbles. I take my torch, take your glove off because your torch is going to be all full <laughs> of resin and you don't want to get that on your hand because if you do, you have to take fingernail polish remover and get it off. You always want to wear gloves. Ugh. So. You didn't take your glove off. First. I know. You always <laughs> torch your bubbles out. And it's going to have more bubbles after that. So you'll probably want to come back 10 minutes later, lean down, Look to see if you have bubbles. If you have bubbles, torch it again. You got to keep torching until they're done. You don't want to torch after there are no bubbles because it is already hardening and you will ruin your resin. So, and you always want to have these gloves on because they're really a bad, resin is so sticky. It's like, ugh not good if I could get my glove back on okay so now we're gonna do a painting you do the painting exactly the same way as your coaster I pick it up pour some on spread it out from the middle to your sides, always from your middle. You wanna make sure that your paintings that you're doing are not sagging in the middle because your resin will go and congregate into the middle and it'll pull away from your sides. You wanna make sure that you have a tight canvas I've had that happen where my canvas wasn't tight 
and I had to do it over. And if you do use silicone, make sure you wash your canvas well, because if you don't, your resin is going to make dapples and it will not stay on the silicone. So you need to really wash your canvas. Please wash your canvas. And the most important thing is, like I said, you need to have your canvas really stretched tight so that it doesn't pull away from the sides because it will pull away from the sides if, if it sinks back into the middle. Yeah, that's a bigger, bigger problem on, those, on the larger canvases. It is. Okay, so we have the canvas done. Okay. Now, uh, do you go back in a little bit and sometimes you get little um, drips on the bottom edge? Right. Do you ever go back and like wipe them a little you bit? You can. Okay. Like this. Okay. Just and go around the bottom. And I'll, I'll tell you the reason why. If you, if you have a lot of drips and they dry, uh, there, I don't know if you can see this, but there are, you, you get these little nubs. Uh, on the edge. Oh, there we go. Uh, get those little nubs. Now, it's, it's not a huge problem because if you have those or a few of them, what I do is I take this Dremel tool. And it basically, um, as you can see, there's a grinder on the tip and you can just grind those little nubs down. Works like yeah. a charm. Um, so this is the Dremel 3000. It's um, it's a plug-in. I had a handheld which was battery operated, but the battery kept going dead too soon on me. So I uh, I got this Dremel 3000, and I'll have a purchase link uh, in the video uh, for this if you're interested. So once I have those those little nubs off, we have these four by four inch uh, cork backings, and they already have. Um, they already have the glue on the back, so you just take this, uh, the white part off, and it fits perfectly on the back of a coaster. So it's very simple. It glues right on automatically. Press it down real good, and your 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 coaster is finished. Then we take the finished coasters, and we have these nice little protective bubble bags, and two of them are back to back, so they don't scratch each other. We put them back to back into the bags for transport and taking them to the shows and and when um, uh, somebody purchases them we put them back into the bags um, and they're, they're safe until they get home. Yeah, they so, fit perfect. Yeah, it works like a charm. Real, real nice. So that's kind of what we do after uh, we have the resin finished. Okay, well, I'm going to go back to my work table because I've got a lot of resining to do. Um, and if you have any comments, any questions that you want to know and ask me about this, feel free to ask me. And um, another thing, um, put in a comment what you would like to see me create. I'll let you be the one to tell me what you would like to see me create. But um, if you would like to subscribe to our channel, hit the bell, you'll get notified every single time we do a video. And um, please share it, give me a likes up. And like I said, tell me what you wanna see. I'm always here. So until the next time, I hope you learned something from my video. And if you want more you know, um, explanation, just leave me a comment. Okay, I hope everybody has a great day because I'm going to be resining. Bye!